Um, just to add to the point about the purpose and principles of social security system, as Scottish Refugee Council, we strongly believe that that should sit within a human rights framework to, that Scot the Scotland has already obligations um, towards um, and to guarantee the dignity of people accessing social security, but also as David said, mentioned, um, the condition of work of you know, staff who will be delivering um, this new system. When we talk about human rights approach, we mean uh, human dignity, we mean accessibility, and we mean equality. Um, evidence from our service of a three-year service um, that we published um, in June 2016 um, with Queen Margaret University where 1,800 people accessed our service showed the difficulty of accessing current TWP services for everybody, but especially for people who are new to this country, are new to any social security system and do not speak English. Um, there's a heavily, um, heavy reliance on organisations like us to navigate those systems, so this needs to be um, taken into account. Our evidence has shown ex um, quite considerable um, delay in processing benefits, which leads to destitution. With the devolution of, uni of universal credit, we really hope that the Scottish Government will explore a um, more efficient process, uh, the current timeline which is too long and put people in destitution and serious financial hardship. Um, and that should again, you know, looking back at a human rights framework, mitigating poverty and guaranteeing human dignity um, should support that. Um, for the universal credit uh, payment, we also support um, options to have split payments between adult, adults of the household um, to avoid issues around finan uh, financial abuse. Um, again, a lot of families will have been through traumatic experience which put a lot of strain on family life and family breakdown, breakdowns do happen and we need to manage that effectively. Um, the other point I wanted to make is about the personal independent payment which at the moment refugees are excluded from because of a two-year residency criteria. Um, CPAG has won recently a, a very good court case for a refugee child to be entitled to disability living allowance and the DWP has not appealed, which is a success of the case. Um, we hope that with the devolution, PEP will become um, accessible to refugees. Many refugees who um, as part of the Syrian resettlement programme, refugees are chosen to come to the UK and to Scotland because of additional vulnerability, which often includes disability. And people who have been through the asylum process will also have other health issues which can be supported by personal independent payment. Did you want to reply? Um, it's absolutely right. The, the need for advice, support and advocacy is just at the, bit, at the stage of making a benefit claim. Um, in the holistic, the holistic Integration Service, which we ran from May 2013 until June this year, um, so we've got two and a half years of evidence of how people have been accessing the benefit system in, the, in, in Scotland. Um, and, bas and we thought that the, initially the, the service was designed to give more support to people who had higher support needs and to encourage people who speak English and understand the system to do, uh, navigate the system on their own. What we found is that everybody needed us. Um, so that was quite striking. Um, the main issue with new refugees is that when somebody is granted leave to remain in Scotland, they receive a biometric resident permit, which is their ID card. And they, there is a protocol between the Home Office and the DWP to issue national insurance number. We've also evidence that this protocol is not functioning. As part of the Scottish Government New Scot strategy for the refugee integration, we've been working very closely with the DWP to review those processes. So there is a recognition amongst um, statutory stakeholders that something needs to be done. The reason why I, I mentioned the national insurance number is that 80% of refugees will claim job seekers allowance. 
which is a claim that is done online. But the system doesn't work if the person doesn't have a national insurance number. It's an IT problem um, that is not being fixed. So this is a, a practical issue that has massive consequences. So people need to make a claim online on the phone. And so somebody who may not speak English or have good English, but the welfare language is a different language. Um, so people will struggle. Um, the DWP is very compartmented with contact centre, benefit delivery centres, no way to have a face-to-face -face contact. And these processes are extremely difficult to navigate. There are complex questions about savings and shares and bank accounts abroad and everything that people are not simply understanding. So we have to sit with people for an hour, an hour and a half phone call to make a benefit claim. Then there will be delays because uh, on average it will take at least 28 days to process a claim of job seekers allowance. By that time the Home Office support will have stopped and we will assess people to access a crisis grant um, from the Scottish Welfare Fund, which again is a fund uh, administrated by Scottish Government and local authorities that um, is accessible via the intervention of third sector organisation. So we are a recognised organisation to support um, people to claim crisis grant. We are, um, th again, the application process is a phone call or an online application. And there is no access to interpreters on the phone. So these are the kind of resources that we talk about. Uh, to answer your question on are there enough advocacy services, it's a difficult one. I would be tempted to say not really. Um, our funding stops in June. We're lucky to have secured further funding, but we have um, therefore been running a limited service to, in the summer, referring people to Citizens Advice Bureau who couldn't cope. Ms. Mignard, do you want to come in on that one? To add uh, to the question on how to build a system in which people have trust, um, I totally agree with, with what's been said already about it's going to take time. Um, but I think the first thing to think about is about clarity. At the moment, the, the systems, whether it's the Scottish Welfare Fund or DWP uh, system, are not clear for people. And taking the example, the specific example of refugees, when they engage with the job centre, they just see another governmental official. They see a lot of similarities with the Home Office because they engage with the DWP every two weeks in the same way that they did with the Home Office. It's again another organisation who give them money and if they don't go and sign, the money is cut. It's an organisation that has a reputation of being punitive. So these are, you know, these are similarities. So refugees need time uh, to understand what is the role of DWP. And in our work with the DWP, this is something that we work on a lot. Uh, a work coach will need to explain what they're here for, what do they do, what is their purpose. So clarity is very important. All the points about co-location uh, will also help because by bringing together different organisations which will avoid people to be ping-ponged to different places, it simplifies the system. Um, advocacy, we talked about it, it's important that a uh, this is independent advocacy. However, it, there could be ways of working as well with um, third sector organisations, not necessarily to be in those places, but that there is uh, an easy access for, from those places. Again, to build trust is the, the principle of not being non-punitive and everybody has talked about sanctions, so I will not um, dwell on this. The last point I want to make is um, it's a system that needs to and that's going to take time, needs to think of the diverse needs of the Scottish population. Um, we heard about training, and yes, training is necessary. We have been involved in delivering some training to DWP. Training is not enough. Um, I've met DWP staff who understand the issues. The next step is how do we make those changes applicable within the, the environment they work on. So we go back to the work environment and the the system in place and the structure that DWP staff or benefit agency staff need to, need to, to meet.